This is Taza, a knowledge series brought to you by Alliance for Coffee Excellence and Cup of Excellence. And so, you know, I, I guess uh, um, I'm, I'm curious for both of you, actually, um, your, 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 your first experience with coffee. I know, Tamara, you'd said that you'd worked for another um, exporter previously, but um, maybe, Kittis, could you tell us a little bit about how you first um, got involved with coffee in Ethiopia and, and what kind of work that looked like? Mm, I was introduced to coffee when I worked to, I, I've, I've been working with uh, USAID projects, three consecutive projects uh, for the past 10 years, and we've been working with coffee industry. Initially, it basically, it's, it's because um, USAID is collaborating with different organizations to provide technical training for coffee, coppers training, and so, so we've been providing that. So I was introduced to the sector uh, back in, 10 years back, uh, but not as much as I'm doing right now, but because of Cup of Excellence for the past three years, I'm only working on that. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my first yeah. introduction is during. Uh, mm. Well, it's interesting because both of you um, entered into coffee kind of around the same time, eight to 10 years ago. And and I, I um, as we yeah. were talking a little bit earlier before we went live, I, I do think that uh, the the entire landscape of, of coffee in Ethiopia has changed a lot in, in eight to 10 years, um, um, whether it's some of the, the activities that ECX has done or um, the Ethiopian Cop Commodities Exchange, or or um, like we were talking about earlier about how this area of Bensa, where, where Tamaru, where you're from, uh, where your washing station's from, um, that is an area that wasn't even being planted. What, uh, how, many, how many years ago would you think that that region has started to kind of evolve? Before uh, five to seven years, uh, people started planting the coffee tree. Uh, but you know, this uh, especially cup of coming of cup of excellence to Ethiopia changed uh, activities of coffee. So people are now started planting trees in a high altitude area, and uh, you know, almost all of uh, winning coffee from Sudama region is you know it's planted uh, in between five to eight years. Okay. Okay, so very, very new. And um, mm. I, I, I think that, that um, you know, it sounded like you're, you, the work that you were doing was kind of early in terms of export work out of the same, the same area of Bensa. And um, I don't know if you have, either of you, if you have any idea on how many washing stations are in that particular zone. Um, but to me, just in looking at an older map, which is, you know, quite a bit, 2014, so this is quite a bit older, but we're probably looking at, over maybe 50, 60 washing stations, or do you think more in the Bensa area? 14, you see it 40? Yeah, I mean, just roughly, I'm not sure how many you think might be there or, or, or maybe there are more. Yeah, by the way, Bensa is very crowded with uh, washing station and uh, probably we are going to get more uh, washing station in coming years because as I told you earlier, uh, this cup of excellence influenced almost all exporters and producers to get to, they are they almost all of them are trying to get new washing station high altitude area so you know even the price between uh, this high altitude area and the uh, low altitude area of one uh, red chair is you know almost there is difference between around uh, 30 percent you know that's a lot of money you know yeah yeah that's that's a big increase that quite a bit of premium so, mm -hmm. yeah so we are going to get more uh, washing station in near time. And I think uh, probably there are more than 30 washing station in uh, Bansa. Okay, okay. So I, I'm curious just um, from, from you, you know, this being a first year, uh, um, you know, win and also entry into the Cup of X, can you just tell us a little bit about how the experience has been for you um, and, and what the process has been like and, and um, maybe, you know, what, what prompted you to enter? Yeah, uh, you know, experience was great. Uh, and uh, I'm also from the near area of last year's winner, Nguse Gamada. You know, my right. Kabale is uh, near to his Kabale. So his Kabale is called uh, Karamo and uh, I'm next to Karamo. Uh, the Kabale is uh, Alo. So uh, I take note and I looked deeply, uh, followed each winner coffee from last year. And uh, I saw uh, 
winning coffee from uh, Arbagona, Romodamo. I visited that area too, and I visited Bona too. Then I decided to start uh, my washing station, uh, the place which I was ground. So uh, I, I analyzed all the altitude and the coffee, and I visited farm. Then after that, I went to Mutat area and I secured land and I started preparing by myself. You know, almost all of producers and the exporters are aware of Cup of Excellence. So everybody was focused, you know, to participate in <laughs> Cup of Excellence. So I decided easily and I, I entered to uh, competition. So it sounds like you there was a lot of uh, work behind the scenes to, to even just kind of choose the the geographic area uh um so a lot a lot more uh work than i than i even realized that's really really amazing and and um and you know kiddest i'm i'm curious just because you were you know overseeing a lot of the entries um did you think that there was an increase um in in this particular area from the first year of cup of excellence to this year Do, did we see more entries from that area yeah we did we did Actually, we get increase in all the areas. As you remember, we received 1,462 last year. This year, we reached to 1,800, uh, around 64 or something. So it's increased in all over the regions that we're collecting samples. Even farmers are requesting to extend the sample collection dates because we just have limited to 10 days and there was a huge demand to submit their copies. Um, especially for these areas, I've been hearing a lot of feedback. We're also doing a documentary in that area to see the impact uh, after the last year winners announced it. I've been hearing that the price is almost tripled. The farmers are selling now 35 per or something. It used to be seven per. That's what I heard. And there are a lot of washing stations are opened up. Uh, buyers are interested to buy from that origin, especially in Sabo, Bensa. So there is a lot of change after last year in these new emerging areas. That yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, that uh, that there's a uh, well when we we do see this in other countries in Cup of Excellence where we'll start to identify a new region um, through the actual competition, and then that actually okay. does create this identity and uh, yeah. recognition. And and so this is um, very similar to a region in Brazil where there were really not recognize that producers were, were doing that. And, and just for the audience to know, uh, we had over 1500 entries this year and typically a cup of excellence in other countries, we're very fortunate to get three to 600 uh, entries. So when we look at Ethiopia, everything is, is uh, uh, bigger and, and more extensive. And, and um, also I think to credit uh, Feed the Future and the program and, and uh, the Coffee Tea Authority and, and the Exporters Association all were, were committed to doing awareness campaigns. And, and I think this past year we did 34 different um, kind of regional uh, workshops to, to let producers know. And I know we did that about that same amount last year. So there's been an extensive amount of work to, um, to kind of let producers know what is Cup of Excellence? Why does it matter? Why should you get involved? Yeah. And I think it, you know it's obviously paid off really, really well. So, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, um, that, that's very interesting, Darren. Uh, as a project that's fit the future, it just Cup of Excellence is not recognizing and uh, rewarding forty farmers. What's very interesting after we see last year is the impact. It's multiplier effect in that origin, in the neighborhood of the farmers in that origin. The impact it created uh, is really huge. That's very encouraging to hear. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we we talk about impact um, in two different ways. The impact for winners, um, like tomorrow's winning, is, is it can be a life changing kind of thing, and certainly open up new markets, which I think is one of the things that yeah. you mentioned about. You know, that you you have markets uh, market in China, but you're hoping that this might help other markets. But but also the effect of uh, a region and um, uh, buyers paying attention to these regions and wanting to start sourcing so they can look through COE as kind of a window and yeah. then start to look at, uh, you know, their coffee buying practices might change. And, and, and also I think the overall, like you mentioned, the overall impact of cherry prices being higher. I'm sure there are a lot of other factors that contributed to that, but I do know that um, some of the research the Coffee and Tea Authority had done last year 
showed a, a premium increase, and they they believe that the cup of excellence had played a, a you know a part in in that. Um, so for us, that's really important because it's not just the competition; it's it's really you know the country and the origin that that we hope to have that type of larger impact. So, um, so would you now? So you won number one and number five. Number one was an anaerobic coffee, and uh, number five was a natural. Would would you would you walk us through a little bit about um, how you did the anaerobic and and maybe some of the steps that you you took and in, in the processing? So. No, it has not been easy, you know. Uh, we were given training to farmers and uh, we applied discipline every day when we collect cherry and uh, we started giving them training how to pick, you know, red cherry from a tree. We started that process before even coffee arrived. Uh, so uh, it was not easy, but, uh, you know, when we collect red cherry, we start floating in the plastic drum. We float coffee. After we remove floaters, we move our coffee to drum and we seal it with, uh, you know, bag. We seal in the drum. We put airlock in the top of drum so oxygen can't move into the drum. And uh, we fermented our coffee for around uh, five to six days depending on weather condition. Then after five to six days, and uh, around 70 to 96 hours, between 72 and 96 hours, we moved our coffee to raised bed and with mesh wire. So it will, there is in mesh wire, there is a better air circulation. So it will give us unique drying in the bed. So we were strictly following moisture content of coffee each day specifically beginning from uh, 20 days to 27, depend on also the situation around uh, that area, the weather condition it will affect uh, the number of days which will took coffee to dry. Average dates are between 20 to 27. And after 27 days, after we measure moisture content, we move uh, our coffee to our warehouse. We put Grain Pro inside jute bag, uh, for natural one, the difference is we are not going to put in a drum. All the steps are the same. Raised bed, generally like raised bed drying for the naturals. So, um, and how many days on the natural that would it typically take to get it down to the moisture content that that you liked? Mm, maximum was twenty seven. I remember. Okay. It is without shade, you know. Yeah. Well, wow. uh, as I told you, altitude is very high, more than 2,400. Mm. Specifically, my location is 2,450. So it's uh, taking around 27 days. And uh, the, the fastest, uh, 18 days. 18 days, wow. Yeah, th that's, I'm used to hearing like 15, 18 days, but 27 days. And, I, you know, it, it does seem like the slower drying uh, does have an effect on quality. Um, uh, you know, with with naturals and and you know, careful slow drying is is critical and um, oh, very interesting. And and so, did you? I'm curious. Did you think that maybe one uh, maybe had a better chance of being a top a top winner, or did you think the natural or the anaerobic, or did you think they both had a a good chance of being in the top ten? Yeah, for me, both coffee the same. The only difference is you know the process. So. Uh, I expected both coffee, to be honest, I expected both coffee. Uh, we made a cupping with my friends and uh, Addis. So uh, almost all cuppers, they told me that they never uh, cupped the coffee of such quality. Oh, no, that's great. So you, 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 had, you had other people helping you on the sensory side. So um, that, that's, that's great. Because, you know, that's one of the things that we, we really hope that producers can uh, be able to evaluate their own quality of coffee, and 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 oftentimes that's not the case. Usually, there's someone else that would kind of you know give you that that quality um, kind of signal and say, oh yeah, this is this is the one you should enter. So you know, we always love when when producers can um, have the opportunity to taste their own coffees and 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 really understand how how it relates to the to the work that they're doing um, in processing and, and certainly picking and harvesting and and all of that. So. Um, 
So Kittist, I was going to ask you a quick question about um, how how the experience has been for you and uh, in, in as a coordinator. And, and also, I, I think uh, something uh, that we talked about a little bit earlier about the awareness campaigns and just that the impact of, of that and, and um, you know, the, the the, the role that you've played in, in kind of sharing the program with, with um, producers in your country, so. Yeah, the, the aware, that's how we started the program here with the awareness creation, because people are not aware of this competition and Ethiopia is big. We have a, a lot of coffee regions, so we have to travel down to the Wereda level to inform farmers about this competition, the benefits, the rules and everything. Uh, other than the, the cup of excellence benefits, we also included uh, technical training on the post harvest management. That's where the big problem is in terms of quality. So coffee authority, technical team, they design a technical training on that. So during the awareness program, we include that technical training. I'm hearing a lot of feedback that farmers benefited from that technical training as well. Last year winner, I think Romo Damo, they've been telling me that they, they have used all the information they get from those technical trainings. So that was really helpful uh, for them to know and understand what Cup of Excellence is. And even for us as well, to understand how the industry operates, what the farmers is looking for, just to adjust the rules, just to fit them. So it was really helpful to organize those awareness creation workshop initially. And this year there's another workshop, but the objective is everybody is aware of the Cup of Excellence because of the remarkable result in 2020. The aim for the 2021 is to respond for, there's a lot of questions because people are already aware of it and they have a question now. So what's the rules, how the coffee is capped. So it gives us an opportunity to respond for the farmers. So it was really helpful for us to start it with uh, the awareness question campaigns and it was really helpful for both of us from our side and from the farmer's side. Yeah, and I, I think there was a direct correlation to the campaign and then the amount of interest. And, and, and you know, we, it, it, we can't say enough how important that, that technical outreach is because yeah. you know, if, if, um, if washing stations and producers don't really understand why they would be doing different things in a, you know, kind of best practices way, then, you know, all of that work could, could result in not really having great outcomes. So I, I think that that's something that you know, it's very, very, um, you know, unique. And, and there have been other programs historically in the past that, you know, I know TechnoServe's program work in the West was uh, yeah. very important. Um, and I, you know, I was luck lucky enough to see some of those uh, trainings and, and, and some of it did include actually cupping uh, coffees with, uh, with some of the communities and, and doing like field cuppings. And, and um, so you, you can see a direct, you know, correlation and, and, you know, kind of the, the last part of that is the, the, the market access that, that's created is that then buyers um, can, can kind of understand a little bit more because of all that hard work that's been done and, and, and kind of direct them through the competition process. And then, you know, when, they, when they're looking at sample sets, they can really see um, the, the quality kind of coming through and, and, and also identifying new, new areas. So, you know, I think that's really, um, you know, one of, the, one of the kind of, for me, one of the best processes out of this whole thing has been kind of the identification of new areas. So, um, so uh, Kamaru, you you um, you just purchased this washing station. Um, you're working with, I, I think uh, we we said about 200 producers that that uh, bring cherry to you. And and what kind of impact will that um, winning will that have for the producers that you're working with in that in that area? The impact is very amazing, you know. Uh, the coffee from that area before a cup of excellence, they were discouraged, you know, uh, because the bean size of that area coffee is, you know, very small. And uh, most of uh, owners of uh, washing station, they are supplying their coffee to uh, ECX. So when they brought coffee to ECX, it's become under screen because bean size is very small, but cup is very high. So they were selling for lower price and uh, so the owners of uh, this processing station, they were not happy to get that coffee. So they are paying lower money. But now everything is changing since Cup of Excellence came to Ethiopia and uh, 
farmers from it's that specific area they are selling their red cherry for more than 30 percent from another uh, location you know the farmers who are uh, harvesting in a low altitude so it's, uh, there is price increase more than 30 percent from uh, another place and also another thing is most of these owners they are going them money after they get profit you know for example i'm going to pay them you know premium we are going them premium so it's very amazing effect in that area and they are encouraged now and uh, started planting new crop they are gardening now coffee it, it, all of farmers started planting coffee so it's an uh, amazing journey for them too yeah that, so basically kind of like a bonus that that would be uh, given based on on the the the, the auction results and um, okay that yeah that that's great uh, that that you know we we work in we've worked in other countries where we have more of a cooperative structure so which you know we obviously see uh, that kind of structure in Ethiopia but in Rwanda and Burundi as well we we would see washing stations that would have sometimes hundreds of, of producers that would make up a lot and then the washing station or the cooperative would then kind of extend a bonus to all of the producers that that were part of that lot so it sounds like a similar framework and and uh that you know that's instead of just one producer one farmer one washing station you're you're actually having a more of a community impact than than you would in and in, in with a private estate i guess so um i think uh you know one one of the things about ethiopia in um uh, in coffee is it's very complex and and uh there are a lot of layers uh, uh whether it's public or private or um um, estates. So, you know, I think some listeners probably maybe are always a little bit um, not not confused, but just like trying to figure out how how Ethiopia works, um, how the ECX works or the second window. And I, I don't know if either of you uh, would would like to kind of maybe explain a little bit about how that works. Um, and and how um, it, it seems, as I understand, many of the copies that were not finalists are actually now going to the ECX um, to be sold as uh, micro lots. And I don't know, Kittist, if you wanted to talk a little yeah. bit about that. So yeah. it's really interesting development. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually the initiative, it's been on discussion between Coffee Authority and ECX and other concerned bodies to start a micro lot auction uh, through the ECX platform. Um, so it's been going, so it's a good opportunity for, for us to, uh, for those coffees who make it to the 150, and for those coffees who didn't make it for the international stage, it just creates us a good opportunity for them to support them to sell their coffee. So the first program for the this micro lot launch was to sell these 110 coffees, and um, these coffees are submitted for a couple of excellence competition. So we need to get the consent of the farmers. So we contacted the farmers, only 62 out of the 110 agreed to sell it using this platform. The other farmers are already go to market. As soon as they enter the 150, buyers are contacting them. So they got already a market. So for the, 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 the 62 ones, the auction is going on for seven days. So we can be able to sell 32 uh, coffee lots. The rest of the coffees and not, um, farmers were hoping for a better price, so they didn't want to take that option. So it was good. It, it, it was started with a cup of excellence uh, coffees, and farmers are really happy to go those opportunities. And, and that's pretty unique in that you generally yeah. see larger amounts of coffee that would be going through ECX, whether it's full container coffee. Yeah. So to see these micro yeah. lots staying intact. Um, is is something that I know coffee buyers um, would be attracted to that. Um, well, internally within Ethiopia, yeah. as well as um, uh, for export too, as well. So, um, so uh, um, Tamaru, would you, um, if do you? Well, I guess we'll we'll really have to find out in July seventh. But I, I have a feeling that you, you know the, the the lots that will split one A and one B. Um, generally, you'll see buying groups that will uh, kind of go for the number one, and they may be buyers from around the world that will come together. And that's one of the things that we do is we we work with the the bidders and say, look, if you if you want to buy just one box, you can buy one box. So the, the likelihood that you're going to see your coffee go into probably a new market uh, or new markets around the world, um, how does that how does that make you feel? <laughs> 
as um, as someone that's primarily been working with one market. So. Yeah, that's amazing, amazing for me. It's, uh, you know, already uh, many birds, they are contacting me on social media. You know, the platform you provide is amazing, you know. It's life-changing for me, by the way. <laughs> already now it's started many, many birds, they are contacting me and uh, there is a high chance of me getting uh, another buyers from uh, USA, Europe, and uh, Asia, or I already sell to Asia, not only to China. Now, from I got contact from Taiwan, from uh, South Korea. So, you know, it's uh, life changing and, you know, it's completely new platform for me. And I am expecting a new market for my coffee, for this auction, auction coffee. I don't know who is <laughs> going to be lucky, but, you know, it's amazing for me. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I, I hope somebody in the U.S. buys a little bit so that I can um, get some locally. Where I, <laughs> no, no pressure on the U.S. data. But you never, you never know. You never know. So, yeah, yeah we, we, we are um, just so uh, the audience knows, we, I think we have about 160 um, uh, sets or bidders that are interested in, and that's about the same amount as last year. And, Again, that's that's a really high number. So uh, we we expect the auction to be pretty, um, pretty fast paced and 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 definitely um, yeah. an exciting exciting one to watch. And um, and so I let's see. I wanted to. Um, um, so we already covered. Um, oh yeah. So I you know I obviously you know we ha we're USAID has been instrumental in in making this a success and. And I, 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 you know, I can only, um, I only have great things to say about about the work that that all of all, all of uh, the the team at Feed the Future has done. And and um, what do you think the, I guess the lasting impact, Kittis, of of uh, what's happened in the last three years of working together? Um, you know, how do you how do you see the future of um, of of I guess not just Cup of Excellence, but really. Um, the future of specialty um, as a result of this work. Any any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I see. You know, I understand there is a big potential for the Ethiopian coffee. What we learned last year is uh, within those difficult times, the interest from the buyer side is interesting. One hundred sixty-eight buyers were registered. The auction was very interesting, as you remember. Uh, buyers were bidding more than 4,000 times to purchase those copies. So the interest is very much encouraging. And in terms of potential, um, Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee. We have more than 60,000 coffee varieties stored in Gin Bank here. So the you know, cup of excellence can be, um, coffees are submitted in four sample collection center in Jamma, Awasa, Dredawa, and Addis Ababa. There are many more coffee varieties who cannot be submitted in terms of distance or other barriers in Cup of Excellence competition. So there is a lot of potential that uh, in the country, and there's a lot of demand in the other side. So we have to work towards that. We have to work towards quality. And what I observed last year and this year as well, a lot of coffees are disqualified because of at the initial assessment because of moisture content and water activity content. So we have to work on the quality aspect. And there is a big interest from the buyer side as long as we work on the qualities. Um, I think every coffee lover in the world loves Ethiopian coffee. And the, I see uh, there, there is a big potential for our coffee. And it's increasing. Uh, and. Um, this year, I was really worried after COVID, you know, I didn't expect this much registration from the buyer side. Uh, last year was <laughs> completely surprising. And this year is even more when I, I receive a lot of emails from requesting the samples and the feedback we're hearing is uh, even last year winners are getting a lot of market. I had a conversation with last year winner this morning. He's telling me that he's receiving a lot of order. So it's very encouraging. So I'm very much optimistic. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's interesting that uh, 
you know, the, the process, uh, well, one, we know that genetically Ethiopia is, you know, the birthplace of a vast amount of genetics. And so I think uh, yeah. we hope to see some development and work on that side, because in some ways, uh, when we look at climate issues uh, in, in the coffee uh, world, uh, we, we, you know, we know that genetics might help us and, and Ethiopia might play a part in, in helping, um, uh, you know, specialty in, in, the, in the coffee world. So I think there's some really powerful things that, that um, are, are certainly, um, um, you know, in play because of, of the, the program in the future. And, um, yeah. I, you know, we do have one question that I'm, I'm just uh, fielding here real quick. Um, I have a, a gentleman, uh, Luis Enrique Delgado, who's um, asked, what will happen with the coffee production on, in Ethiopia? We know that production, production are low, lowering and what will make the farm for maintenance or raise the coffee production in Ethiopia. Um, this gentleman's from Guatemala. And so I, I think I think that kind of talks a little bit about what we we're talking about in terms of climate. Um, so I, do we see, I mean, I think when we look at yields per hectare, um, Ethiopia is not um, as high as like a Brazil in terms of production. But I, I think that's, uh, I think some of the things that we're talking about and, and be best practices but also fertilization, you know, I, I'm not sure if, if Tamara, if you want to talk a little bit about the yields um, in, in your particular area, Bensa, but uh, generally, you know, I'm, I'm not totally sure of how many, how much uh, coffee per hectare um, you, you get in, in coffee yields. So maybe you could answer that question. Okay. Uh, the yield per hectare is uh, between 12 to 15 quintals. Quintals mean 100 kg, you no? bag of 100 kg so the average is between 12 to 15 uh, and it also depends on the altitude and the lower altitude the yield is much better around 15 1500 per hectare and my area it's high altitude so it's around uh, 10 i mean 1000 uh, yeah 1000 kg per hectare so it's uh, you know almost all of the farmers who are living now in a higher altitude as I told you earlier, they started planting coffee and uh, also the cup is for those coffee from a high altitude and the low altitude is very high difference. So most of farmers, they are, you know, moving to higher altitude and purchasing land and they started uh, planting a coffee tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, that, you know, that that's one of the things that, you know, production uh, it, production increases are always challenging uh, because it's really infrastructure and it's having, you know, the ability to have access to, to fertilization and, and, and also the varieties, the types that you're planting, you know, really can, um, um, can increase your yields as well. And, and that's one of the things that it's very challenging for producers in Ethiopia to actually know what they are planting. And, and that's something that, you know, we're, we're identifying that through the program um, by selecting certain varieties and then having them uh, tested so that we can actually verify what, what they are. And, and that's something we've been doing um, with RD2 Vision, uh, a French company that does DNA fingerprinting. So, you know, that, that's something that the GEMA Research Center has already, you know, done since, well, like, the, well, for many, many years. But I know some of the new varieties that were put out were established in the late 70s with the idea that certain regions would be getting allocations of varieties. And and all with the effort of, of improved quality, but also increased production. And so that that's something that, you know, I think I think it's still kind of developing in, in within Ethiopia to be able to, um, you know, kind of uh, expand on that that technology and, and the science that's gone on behind that. Um, do you think we have another? Hold on, I think we have another question. Um, um, oh, this is just more of a thank you. Uh, I th I thought we had a question there. Um, let's see here. Let me go. So we're getting a little bit close to our, our time, but um, I, um, I guess, uh, do you, do you, Tamara, do you see yourself entering next year to the competition? Of course. You know, oh. Cup of Excellence is dream of uh, every coffee producer in Ethiopia. Really, it's, it has a huge impact and it's uh, life changing and. It will make you millionaire, in, uh, you know, in a few times. So it's, uh, I will mean, each year for coming. I, I see me winning next year's competition too. 
That's great. No, great, great. Um, and I, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love hearing that. And I also, I think it, it kind of, it, it also lets people in your community and in that, that area of Bensa know, well, maybe I should enter too. You know, maybe I, maybe I want to, if, if, you know, my neighbor won, maybe I should get involved and maybe I've got a, you know, a high quality coffee to enter into. So there's that kind of effect by just, you know, being in a, in a region and in an area and having that, that kind of impact too, as well. So, um, so um, let's see, I, um, again, I want to remind everybody uh, that July 7th is the, the Cup of Excellence Ethiopia auction. Um, it'll be starting at 6 a.m. In, uh, in Pacific Standard Time um, here in, in Portland, where we're at today. Um, and also the National Winners Auction is June 28th through July 9th. So mark it on your calendar and uh, hopefully um, we'll, we'll have an incredibly powerful auction again this year. And um, uh, we have some kind of fun questions um, that I'll ask Kittist. Um, yeah, okay. If you were a coffee drink, what would you be? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a traditionally brewed Ethiopian coffee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Tamara, what about you? <laughs> uh, I like you know, this filter mm. coffee, filter coffee, so I would be mm. you no know, coffee. <laughs> uh, all right and then uh, uh, uh for both of you um this is one from anna that that she's put together which is what's your superpower <laughs> <laughs> my superpower is um i never give up i don't give up easily <laughs> yeah it, it, it just <laughs> i love it. I think that helped a lot last year. Oh it's yeah, my yeah. entire <laughs> yeah. professional life. So yeah, definitely that's great. great. <laughs> Tomaru, if you have a superpower, what would it be, or what is it? I like to smile all the time. You know, I'm happy most of the time. <laughs> that's my. <laughs> great. Well, that that's great. Yeah. Um, well, I, I want to thank both of you very much uh, for uh, putting up your time uh, this evening. I know it's 6, six or 7 p.m. your time in, in Ethiopia, and uh, it's really a delight to, to, to bring you two together and talk a little bit about the program and about um, your, your winning lots. And, um, and, and Kittis, thank you very much for everything you've done in the program. It's, it's been incredible working with you. and, and um, Hopefully I can be there in August for the, the ceremony. Yeah. I'm, I'm making plans to, to be there and see everybody in, in person. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so, and I wanna thank uh, the audience uh, for um, hanging out with us today. And um, yeah, thank you very much. And you all have a great evening and we'll talk soon, okay? Thank, thank you. you so much, Darren. All right, What's thank up you. Later? Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.